in honor of Shogun, Shogun cleaning out the Emmys. Oh, they did? Oh, man. They won a bunch of stuff. I guess I missed that. Yeah. When is the one that Nikki Glazer's hosting? Was that it? I didn't watch it. Oh. <laughs> just read the article. Okay. Well, yeah. geez, dude. Sorry. I'm not mad. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Dan's the one that's mad today, not me. That's right. I'm mad because I don't have any Lone Star beer in front of me. We're going to talk about Lone Star beer for a second. We had uh, Lone Star and Lone Star Light at last night's uh, watching party as well. In fact, what watching party would be complete without the national beer of Texas? I ask you. Um, Yeah, we have a uh, partnership with Lone Star Beer now. Don't know if you saw this. We have their uh, logo. Their big sign is now in our studio as well. Lone Star Beer, Careful. perfect with a tray of barbecue, crisp flavor. It's also really good with pizza. Is that right? <laughs> I had it last night with pizza. Oh, that's right. It's fantastic. Blake was pounding the pizza and pounding the Lone Star Light. They're celebrating. Uh, oh, you were drinking Lone Star regular. Red can. Yeah. Yeah. Blake wants the red can. I get the blue can. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're celebrating 140 years of brewing in Texas, and they decided what better way to celebrate than to partner up with the Dumb Zone. So that's what they are doing. Uh, We are in uh, in a collab, I guess you would say, with Lone Star Beer. And uh, they're awesome. Uh, Great dudes as well. And the Dumb Zone 21 is now set up on their website. So you can go to LoneStarBeer.com, use the code DUMBZONE21, you can get 21% off merchandise. You must be 21 or over to purchase merchandise at LoneStarBeer.com. So, you know, go check them out. You, I saw, grabbed a 12-pack the other day in the grocery store as well because we need a little extra for the uh, party. So Lone Star Beer, and don't forget Lone Star Light. That's my thing, Lone Star Light. Um, right now. I press this button, and all of a sudden, the Dumb Zone presents we're doing this. Today in history. It's Monday, October 7th. Our elite ride is uh, waiting outside for us, so we'll get there in a, in a moment, Jake. On this day in 1916, it was the most lopsided victory in college football history. I suppose it would also be the most lopsided loss in college football history. But it doesn't say that here in the copy point, uh, or in the AP copy. Georgia Tech, coached by John Heisman. Oh, wow. Faced Cumberland University. What do you think their nickname was? (laughs) Cumboys. The (laughs) Cumboys. They won 222 to nothing. What? Oh, hell yeah. There were no first downs by either team. Cumberland did not make one first down. And uh, Georgia Tech scored on every offensive play. <laughs> what? What year was this? 1916. So we were wondering last night during the stream, was this how football was in the 70s? 17 to 13. Just Ugly games. Crappy, muddy, whatever games. But apparently there used to be higher scoring games. God, that is right at the like top ten things of things I wish were on video. What did the other team yeah. look like? <laughs> I'd That's really like to almost see that. impossible to even consider, right? Could Cumberland that day <clears throat> maybe they were covered in cum? <laughs> Want to go try? Why and would they? Can't see them. My eyes are stinging. Okay, would Cumber? Could Cumberland from that day? beat the best kindergarten team in the state of Texas <laughs> right now. Well, that's interesting. So you got a group of like 19 to 22 year old men yes. and a group of five, Kindergarten's six... a little silly. Yes. Okay, but Pee-wee. what if they have Let's... like six year old, seven year old because yeah. they held him back? Kyler Murray? Ninth grade team. Oh, that's a... F- no, they couldn't you beat say any win. ninth grade team could beat the Cumberland could, Cup that, boys. Dan, they could yeah. not beat a sixth grade team. I think that's where I would put it. Like sixth I said, grade. the best in the state, you're going to get those like... Uh, Friday night tykes, kids. Do you think there's any way we can actually see this happen? AI might be able to make it happen. On this day in 1998, Matthew Shepard, a gay college student, was beaten and left tied to a wooden fence post outside uh, Laramie, Wyoming. He died five days later. Is this the one where some radio guy got fired for 
Or was that the dragging? Yeah, I think that was Jasper. I'm pretty sure. Was that a gay guy? No, that was a black guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're both pretty bad situations. <laughs> Way to step out this, there, bud. <laughs> is there this a, program is would there, like to... Is there a bright side to this story? Condemn in the strongest of words. The bright side is no radio guy got fired after this one because everybody knew this was much too serious to uh, make any light of uh, at all. Which is not that bright of a side because then there was less jobs for us. So maybe this is just all over. Why don't you just move on? Just on this day in 2003, California voters recalled Governor Gray Davis and elected Arnold. Arnold. That was wild, dude. That's when I learned what a recall was. Because, like, uh, oh, yes, I learned that. No, no, no. Well, I didn't know that. It's I don't not every state, but who all ran? Didn't, like, uh, what? There's two uh, younger uh, black actors who are on shows. You got uh, Willis. There's only two? I'm talking Webster. About Webster and, and Gary Coleman. Oh, yeah. Gary Coleman did run for government. One of them was in that run. Okay. Yeah. Let's go Gary Coleman. Yeah. Who said? What are you talking about, Willis? That's right. <laughs> what are you? That's his famous catchphrase. On this day in 2006, Mean Green Believers got to see UNT win a seven-overtime game. Rice. Nope. Damn. Florida International, mm. where Dennis Hopovac hit a, his fifth field goal of the game to win the game. Dennis Hopovac spelled his name with one N, so it looks like Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are so immature yep. thinking that's funny. <laughs> I won't have it. I don't feel like I had a choice. And on this day in 2023, Hamas-led militants launched air and ground attacks on Israel, killing nearly 1,200, taking more than 250 hostages. The attacks followed hours later by Israeli counterattacks marked the beginning of the current Israel-Hamas war, which we here at the Dumb Zone condemn. Well, right? we, we issued a ceasefire. We, yes. Like the San Antonio City Council. Yeah. Right. Weighing in, yeah. Said they want no more bloodshed. Yeah. And the good news is that worked. And yes. uh, we'll never have another war like this again. Let's issue a proclamation two. that we also want no more bloodshed. What about a day? One day of total bloodshed? <laughs> Well, that's a good idea too, but I just think we need like a ceasefire day, and then Luca day, and oh, okay, yeah. Well, I mean, even in World War One, didn't the uh, Germans and the Russians celebrate Christmas together in a one-day ceasefire? Is that not in your book? Uh, you get to Christmas yet? No. Yeah. They'll get there. Don't spoil it for him. I thought it was going to end with <laughs> August. Oh. Uh. But no, I yeah we're still. It actually is going to go to the next August, and I think the next August too. It's okay, a lot cool. of August in there. Yeah, and then eventually they're just writing about preseason football. Yeah, four years of trench fun. Yeah, they were all pretty sure it was going to be a few months. You know, there was a young corporal in the. Uh, Dude, the this journey. guy is. This guy is. A lot of like the reparations a, a are. A few minutes away from telling me that the Treaty of Versailles was a little too strong. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to smack him quite like that. Famous wedding on this date in 1989. Larry King, talk show host, married Julie Alexander. Oh, man, what a great Wikipedia page. That yeah. is the sixth of his eight marriages. Which one was this, Julie Ag Alexander? Yeah. That one made it three years. Okay, nice. Yeah. His second to last wife. Famous divorce on this date in 1988. Robin Givens filed for divorce after eight months of marriage to Mike Tyson. So did he remarry an old one? No. He did marry one woman twice, though. His third wife he was married to for two years, got divorced, and got back together with her four years later, and then stayed married to her for another five years. How many wives did he have in between remarrying uh, his former wife? One. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two? One. Yeah. Uh, uh, one. Yeah. Okay. And he was with her for... No, Two. Two. One of them he was with for one year, the other one with for four years, so he was never not married. 
He was divorced to her from five years and smashed two marriages in there. And you know what's awesome about it, too, is uh, he got divorced in 2019 when he was 85 and then died two years later. So it's not like he died. I can't died even live with her for this. For yeah. This. Like, I know I'm about to die. She wipes me and all that, but no, I got to. <laughs> wipes me. <laughs> Uh, today's birthdays we lead off with 62 years old former NFL running back Tom Rathman. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> and you can see he was a clear other option. I mean, they should have thrown it more, but you had Tom Rathman. Uh, let's go through his <laughs> nine-year career. <laughs> uh, rushing yards by year, 138, Who's 257, 427, which was his career high. <laughs> You're so Let's just – we'll just stop right there. <laughs> well, without him. 305, 318, 183, 80. Anyway. He was efficient, though, at 3.7 yards a carry. There's no Lipke without Rathman. I was actually thinking the same thing. He was a special player, though. He was uh, – I don't know. <laughs> he was a pioneer, Dan. I like me some Lipke. He's one of the few out there that actually cares about the game and yeah, play man. without having to be paid. You know, shows up early. Dude, he's just Stays a lunch late, type of guy. Knows where to be. Kind of seems like a coach on the field. Sure. Chase Daniel, 38. He's made so much money. Is he on the list already? Did you write mine down? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him passed out in the middle of the day outside of Superior Grill in New Orleans. Chase Daniel? Mm-hmm. Hmm. We were down there for one of my brother's games, and uh, Superior Grill was an awesome place, party place. It was a Saturday afternoon in the summer, so he didn't have anything to do. No? Maybe they were just off? I don't know, but... Um, well, he he's just, Chase Daniel, so he didn't have anything to do. Yeah, right? when but this, you don't want to be passed out. So maybe we were down there a little bit early. But he, like, never even got a shot season. as, like, a starter, uh, I'll try yeah. starting with this guy for a year. I just saw him sit down like in so front many of a spares tree, have. Sit down in front of a tree and be like, maybe this is where yeah, I'll take this a, a good little spot. Nap. Yeah. I'm Chase Daniel. Cool dude. Priest Holmes, 51. <sighs> in his day, man. Mookie Betts, 32. Did you see Profile rob him yesterday? I, I heard about that, yeah. I don't miss anything in October. Evan Longoria, 39. The war games, Evan Longoria versus Pre, uh, Mookie Betts. Longoria played for a long time. Longevity? <laughs> Let's go Mookie. It can't be Mookie. It is Mookie. 69.6 hey. to 58.6. Mookie wow. Betts, 32 years old. A lot older Hall than Hall of Famer? Age. Yeah. I feel like that's... Yeah. Yeah, That's I don't feel like Mookie Betts is a Hall of Famer, but no. if you say that and you're like, well, what if he adds another 20 or 30 war? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charles Woodson, 48. Man. Bree Olsen, 38. Of Coach Heisman. Who's she again? Charlie Sheen's favorite porn star back in the day when we were doing the Sheenius tour. <laughs> <laughs> is that her? Is she the one on the right? She is the blonde. Did he? Did she give him AIDS? Mm, no. Uh, I don't know. Who's the guy in the middle? He looks like he's from Kids in the Hall. I was yeah, going to say, is, isn't he dead? Didn't he drink too much? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. Is that him? That's the Kids in the Hall guy, yeah. Yeah. Why, yeah she must be in a why skit, is he, skit with him or something. Why is he giving her a mammogram? <laughs> <laughs> Oliver North, 81. He Vladimir sold weapons. Putin is 72. Contra rebels or something. Simon Cowell, 65. I'm sorry, what was the one that... Oliver North? Oh, dude, you know the best thing about that? Uh, Much like with Mark Furman, whenever there's like, hey, there's a trial going on. Let's check in with this uh, oh, disgraced yeah, yeah. detective yep. for his analysis of the crime. Whenever there's something popping off for America, like in a war, they're like, let's go to the conscious of uh, any war effort. Some, it's Ollie North. Some consider him a true patriot. Like on Fox News. I'm like, this guy's a, he was arrested. I don't know. Dave Foley alive. No, that's not Dave Foley, is it? Is it? I think it is Dave Foley. I thought he, I thought he had a problem. I don't know. I think he did. He's like looking really puffy. Yeah. <laughs> Not there. He's looking pretty good there. Yeah. Hopefully. She's buffy. He was in uh, uh, 
Was he in like the recent Fargo? Yes, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Simon Cowell, 65. Can't stand. Allison Munn, 50. Who's Says that? here that 70s show. So I thought you'd be stoked on it. Mm. Jamie Hector is 49. You want it to be one way. But it's, it's the other, other way. way. Nicole Ari Parker is 54. She is Becky Barnett in Boogie Nights. The tall black lady. I just love Boogie Nights. We're going to mention anybody who is in Boogie Nights. Uh, Yo-Yo Ma is a cellist and 69. Tony Blake. Braxton is 54. We got him. Broke up the big three. And Thom York is 56. Yeah. Happy birthday, Thom. Yeah. He's... From Radiohead. I which still is... haven't listened to your new record yet. I didn't know there was one. <clears throat> yeah, the Smile dropped a brand new one on Friday. Did you see Thom Brenneman did a college football game? <laughs> <laughs> I was 99% sure that was a drop until I looked up. <laughs> Okay. Is he? Did oh, somebody a did a college football Drop game? Beth will get that for us. <laughs> as long as uh, what did he just, do? Just say this. Uh, SMU TCU. Oh, okay. So like weeks ago? Yeah, but he put a headset on again. Yeah, oh, they actually. Well, he'd already been doing a little bit, right? The problem was really? he wasn't allowed to wear a headset. Yeah, so, so all of the freestyle. production <laughs> notes were Dick just Mike. like, you know. Couldn't talk to the truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all over the map. <laughs> uh, born in the stay now dead, Heinrich, Heinrich Himmler. And Tony Sparano. Love Tony Sparano. Author of one of my favorite football coaching bits of all time. I've mentioned this before, yeah. right? Yeah. When he took over as an interim coach, I think from the Raiders, then this is straight out of high school football practice. He had the whole team. He printed up a bunch of copies of their schedule up to that point and brought out a bunch of shovels and was like, man, we're burying what's happened before. And they literally buried pieces of paper <laughs> for inspiration. Like, yeah, this will do it. Does that stuff help? No, but I love it, though. <laughs> I think at Clemson they have a little graveyard where they've buried play sheets or something. I, I don't know. They they got something like that. It's football. Football. Ball. Football. Football. You know. Uh, Dead on the no. stay, still dead. We have Edgar Allan Poe. Devontae. And early in your time gone, somebody had emailed us alleging that Danny – because you weren't he you were here mm -hmm. and it was the old wall and then you uh were gone yet then we had this wall and somebody said Danny came in and walled you up behind the pro slap yeah. wall <laughs> that I went full telltale heart on your right. ass but then, yes, that's he awesome felt very guilty because he heard uh your heart beating or something but then I realized it was my own but you guys were fucking bored <laughs> yeah 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 you missed some quality programming <laughs> And then uh, also died on this day in 2005, Charles Rocket. It says here, comedian. Oh, I've heard of this guy before, right? Then it says, suicide, slit his own throat. He's in uh, the SNL Whoa. book. Which, that's. I would tell you that you are not going to be a, you're not going to be a successful comedian if you're doing stuff like that. That's not funny at all. Rarely hear that, if at all. Yeah, There's a method of. Do you not remember him. this from the SNL book? Somewhat. He did a, uh, they did a spoof of Who oh, Shot wow. JR uh, of Dallas in the Who Shot JR episode. And uh, so, anyways, Charlene Tilton's on it and she asks him playing JR, like, uh, how do you feel about being shot? And in character, he replied, oh man, it's the first time I've ever been shot in my life. I'd like to know who fucking did it. But it was live. And in 1981, that gets you fired. Mm. Which is crazy. I mean, I guess it is network TV, and they had told him not to do it, and he did it anyways. But I will tell you that as much as they try to edit the McAfee show, they have no problem with the word shit, for sure. It's really just the F word and a couple others. They don't get all the F words on ESPN. Really? Yeah. On big ESPN? Shit is no problem. They'll do that no matter what. But, like, for example, they had Marshawn Lynch on the other day for the Cal game. About half of the audio was gone. <laughs> and a couple times they missed the F word or the N word. <laughs> mm. Interesting. Yeah. 
there's hope for us all. He runs the company. Well, I like that. <laughs> right? We want power, power with the people.